Hey, it's Abby, and today I wanted to answer one of the most common questions that I've gotten since we started this channel, and that is, how do you make your labels that you have on just about everything around your house? So the answer is I use the Silhouette machine, it's a cutting machine, and adhesive vinyl to make them, and I'm going to walk through the steps today so that you can make them too. Before we get started, I wanted to invite you to follow us over at our new Instagram account, at Abby Organizes, where we'll be sharing even more organization inspiration and tips. Here's everything you'll need to make your pretty labels with your silhouette. Your silhouette cutting machine and the Silhouette Studio software, adhesive vinyl, transfer tape, a craft cutter and or scissors, a measuring tape, a scraper tool and hook tool, and some sort of surface for your label. So if you remember last week in our video, we organized our boys' playroom and I created a little craft cart for them. So today I'm going to demonstrate making labels for some of the little containers that are on their craft cart. So the first thing I always do is measure my item. I grab the bin, I use this little soft measuring tape to measure how wide I want my label to be and also how tall. And I make note of that so that when I go into my silhouette software, I know exactly how big to make my font. So now we are going to go over to the computer to create our labels. I am going to type out the word that I want and then change it to the font. I like a font called Crushed. It's a Google font, it's free. I use it for a lot of my labels. I just think it looks really nice. And so that is the one that you'll see on a lot of my labels around our house. And then I'm going to resize it to be the size that I want based on what I measured for. And then an easy way to make a second label is just to right click and then press duplicate. It'll duplicate that word and it will already be in the correct font. So then I just get my cursor in there and I write the new word and I have the two labels that I wanna make. Now, I do wanna make a note about using a cursive font. There's one extra step you'll want to do just to make sure a cursive font flows together nicely. So I'm going to demonstrate, I'll write the word crayons again, and I'll use a cursive font I know I like called Carolina Pro Black. And to make sure that all of these letters flow into each other and that there aren't extra cuts between your letters, you're going to right click it and then you are going to select weld and that just makes sure all the letters flow together. After I weld them, I drag my cursor around all of the parts of the word and I right click again and I group it and that allows me to move the word around as a unit and resize it or whatever I need to do from there. So we're not gonna use the cursive font this time, I just wanted to show to demonstrate, so I'm going to delete that. And since we have our two labels that we wanna cut, we can get ready to send those to the silhouette. So I'm going to push the send to silhouette button. And before we actually send it and cut it, I'm going to go into adjust cut settings and just make sure everything is correct in here. So under the material type, I wanted to make sure I have vinyl selected and then it will give us some recommendations for settings to use down here. So on my blade, it's telling me that I should use blade number one. So I wanna check my blade and make sure that I'm on number one and that that's selected. And then I also always just use their recommendations when it comes to speed and thickness. So it's recommending a speed of five and a thickness of 10, and I don't change that. So I'm ready to go, and we can load our vinyl into the machine. Now, since I'm working with a fairly large piece of vinyl, I am just going to put it right into the machine. So on my machine, I'm going to choose the load media option. If I was working with a smaller piece of vinyl or I just wanted to use a cutting mat, I could do that as well. Then I would just put my vinyl onto the cutting mat and instead of choosing load media, I would choose load cutting mat. So there are two options for that. I think it's just easier to do it without the mat. So if I have a big enough piece of vinyl, I typically choose the load media and just load my vinyl right into the machine. 
And now that our vinyl is loaded, we can push send to silhouette and it will cut everything. So once my project is cut, I like to use my paper slicer or you could also use scissors to slice off the part with your words on it. Don't cut off any of your words by accident. And then I cut them apart so I have each word individually. And then I weed off any of the vinyl that I don't want. That's not part of my label. So for the big pieces, I can just peel that off with my fingers. Sometimes, and these ones are pretty big, I will, would probably just use you know my fingernails to weed out the letters for this one. But if you get smaller letters and you have a trickier spot, you can use the hook tool to weed out um, some of the pieces that you don't want in there so that you just have the exact word and the exact vinyl that you're going to wanna to put on your project. So once my label is weeded and looks the way I want it, then I need to get out my transfer tape. And this is going to help me make sure that I am taking the whole word as a unit and putting it on my project. If I tried to take each letter individually, it probably wouldn't line up exactly and look really pretty. So transfer tape helps me transfer the entire word together. So I will just, see how big I need to make it and I will cut it to size and then I peel off the backing and then the transfer tape is sticky. So I put it down over top of my label and if you can line it up with the markings, usually they're marked off by one inch markings on the transfer tape, that will make it a lot easier when you go to apply it to your bin or whatever you're putting your label on. So I try to get everything lined up nice and neatly and put the transfer tape on my label. And then I use the scraper tool to kind of really scrape at it and make sure that the vinyl is going to adhere to the transfer tape. So once I've scraped it, then I carefully peel off the backing of my vinyl. Sometimes if the vinyl wants to pull up with the backing, you kind of have to manipulate it with your fingers a little bit and hold it in place so that the vinyl stays on the transfer tape and your backing comes off clean. And then once I have done that, I am ready to apply it to my little container. Now, at this point, you can be as picky about spacing and getting things straight as you want to be or not. So sometimes I'll take my measuring tape and I'll measure and make sure I'm exactly lined up. Other times I'll just try to eyeball it. These containers are pretty easy because they have a little dot right in the middle. And then since I lined up my label on the transfer tape exactly, I can just count the inches and find the middle point of that. So I can eyeball it pretty well in this circumstance. In other circumstances, you wanna, might wanna measure or even use a little level if you wanna get it exactly centered and look straight. So I put down my transfer tape with my, that has my label on it exactly where I want it. And then again, I take my scraper and I scrape over the word because now I want the label, the vinyl, to come off of the transfer tape and to stick onto my bin. So I scrape at it and then I very carefully peel off the transfer tape so that the vinyl stays on my bin and then the transfer tape comes up clean. And then my label is on the bin and it looks beautiful and everybody knows what goes in what bin. When I have acrylic bins, I really like to put the label at the bottom because it's kind of a nice surprise when you lift the item out and you see this pretty little label at the bottom of your bin. It just gives it that extra little touch. And for these, practically speaking, when my boys, come on, you know they're gonna do this when they dump out all of their crayons and markers, then there's no question where everything goes back. They can see exactly where they put each of their items into place. Now you can do way more with a silhouette machine than just making labels. The possibilities are literally endless. I'm not a silhouette guru, but I will link to my friend Melissa from Silhouette School. She has a channel where you can learn even more about all things silhouette. So I hope it was helpful to see how I make my favorite types of labels. I know not everybody has a silhouette machine or wants to buy one. So I actually have two other labeling tutorials that I'll link to in the description about how to make labels with programs that you already have access to on your computer. And if you wanna see even more labeling videos, make sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments.